Welcome to another Daily Dose of Drupal. This is Shane, and this is episode number 17. Today we're going to be continuing on the module development basics we went over yesterday and looking at the hook menu and hook permission or er, hooks for Drupal. And of course we have our Drupal 7 module here yesterday that we created called My Block. If you did not follow along with yesterday's example, you may want to go back and look at that, or if you have any custom module or you're familiar with creating at least the basics of a custom module, you can go ahead and do that and you can probably follow along without much difficulty. So hook menu, what is it and why do we need to use it? Anytime you want to define a menu item or a page callback inside your Drupal module, you'll need to use hook menu. This is important for administration pages, for example, or if you have a custom form that you want to build on a custom page. You'll also use this for Ajax callbacks, potentially, um, d depending on how you set it up, of course, or any type of uh, any t any setting where you need to access something or some resource from your website from a specific URL. So for instance, if I want to get to a specific URL on a page and I don't want to use the traditional content type to do that, I can define something in a custom module. And it's really pretty basic and pretty straightforward, but there's a couple caveats to hook menu. A couple things that you're going to need is uh, an example. We'll go ahead and just grab this very first example here. So if we go ahead and inside of our module, I'm just going to drop it at the top. Add my comment to it. And fix the indenting a little bit. Okay, and let's go over what this is doing. In this case, we're defining a URL structure of ABC slash DEF, and we're making a page callback call to this function. So this would be a function we're going to need to define, and we can pass in specific arguments. Uh, for this example, we're not going to be passing any arguments into our function, so we're going to get rid of that. We're going to give it a title which this is the actual title of our page. We'll just call this my page. For the URL, we're going to access it through my page, all lowercase. And for the page callback, we'll go my block underscore my page. And keep in mind, my block is just the name of my module. So I, of course, have to change that here and obviously it might not be the best name in this case but this could be whatever your module name is and so generally you want to name your functions that you're creating with my block or your module name whatever it is underscore you know something so you'll know how to where it's at and how to access that callback function you can define specific types of menu items and I encourage you to read the documentation on drupal.org for hook menu because it's going to tell you what these different types means, what these different type of menu uh, definitions mean. Menu normal item, uh, menu callback is one that gets used often. If you want to integrate within the Drupal tab system, you can have local task and a whole bunch of other things. And these are defined right down here. It talks about menu normal item, menu default local task, menu local task. And it gives you an example that you can take and use for how that can be useful. Inside hook menu on api.drupal.org, you'll see it talks about all the different things that you can add into this array for this specific menu item. There's title, title callback, and on down the list. The other one we're going to look at, and you can see there's a, there's a whole bunch. Not all of them get used that often, but there's a lot of things there. The other thing we're going to add is access argument. And 
you can define a simple array here that's going to look at the permissions of the current user and see if they have this permission. In this case we're going to say can they access content on the website. So we're going to go ahead and open up another browser here. Get rid of all this stuff. And go to the test website. So now I'm logged in as an anonymous user and as the admin user. So before I can see this page, I have to actually create that function. Add a simple description there. And notice we, since we didn't have any page arguments, this is going to be empty. If we had page arguments, we would have variables in there. And here you can just return any HTML you want to be rendered on your page. In this case, we're just going to I'll put some very simple HTML. Um, I also will be focusing in a future episode on renderable arrays as that's kind of the the new way you should be doing it in Drupal 7 but to keep things simple we're just going to output straight HTML here. Now if we save this and we come up here to my page you'll notice it is not going to work. You'll see the requested page could not be found. The trick here is anytime you change something in hook menu you need to clear out the menu cache. So I'm going to do this through Drush and in this case the selection is 3. You can also go to configuration, performance, and clear the cache that way. Now if I come back to this page you see that I'm able to get to my page. I have this block here which I'm just going to come to my blocks and hide that for now since it's just kind of getting in the way. And now if I come back, you can see the title is my page. It's also up here. And there's my text. So very simple. The only other thing we're going to do is implement hook permission to create our own permission. And we will go ahead and copy this simple example here. I'm going to paste this at the top. There's really no specific order you have to implement these hooks in. It's more or less however you see it fit, but there's, in some, I have kind of a general order that I follow for the most part. But as long as you're consistent across your modules, it will be easy for you to go ahead and find out or easily locate these different functions. So I replaced the hook text with the name of my module and we get to define our permission. So I'm going to say access my page. You can give it a title. So you can give it a title and a description. And that's really all there is to it. We can go ahead and save this. And obviously you could have multiple here. You could add another one right below here and define a bunch of permissions inside of your module. We're, go we're going to define the one. Now if we come back here and we go to people and permissions. you'll notice that if we search for my page in my block module there's now a permission called access my page uh, the, if we go, want to go back to this my page you'll notice that it still works because I am logged in as user 1 make sure of course to actually change the access argument here to use your new permission before I forget so access my page. Let's save it. 
and hop over to Drush to clear the menu cache again because I changed that menu item so I need to make sure to clear the cache. If I refresh I'm still able to access this because I'm logged in as user 1. However, if I come over here and I am not logged in, I get an access denied. Let's go ahead and change that so anonymous users can access that page. We come into permissions, find the permission, and we're going to give access to anonymous and authenticated users. Scroll all the way to the bottom, hit save. Now if I hop back over here and refresh, I can get to the page. Simple as that. Obviously there's a lot more to hook menu and I just encourage you to look over that documentation on api.drupal.org on hook menu as that will be very valuable when you're trying to learn all the ins and outs of what you can do. Uh, that's it for this time. Uh, tomorrow we're probably going to focus on some more module development hooks and just slowly work our way through most of the basics. So if you have any questions or if you want to see anything specific on a future episode of Daily Dose of Drupal, go ahead and contact me via Twitter or on CodeKarate.com. Follow me at smthomas3 or sign up for my CodeKarate.com newsletter. Thanks for watching the Daily Dose of Drupal.